My name is Zaman Stanizai. I teach at the Pacifica Graduate Institute in Santa Barbara. And I'm a political scientist and a linguist uh, by profession. And I also teach the Islamic traditions, primarily uh, uh, Sufism and Tasawwuf in general. I think the Muslim world was waiting for such a movement that would uh, tap uh, onto the core values of Islam as a tradition rather than Islam as a religion. And the problem with most movements is that they wear their piety and religiosity on their sleeve. Uh, what the Hizmet movement and Gulen's movement in general is that they act upon what matters rather than talking about what doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Is that um, talk is cheap, as they say. Uh, we are confessional Muslims for the most part, but when it comes to action, a lot of us uh, hold back. And that is a kind of a hypocrisy that could be part of someone's character but it could also be part of uh, a, a, a kind of a group identity. And by group, I mean, in this case, Islamic identity. That the Hezmet movement is doing the thing that matters is to serve humanity. And uh, the prophet had said that the best of you is those uh, whose fruit of labor benefits other human beings. And the fruit of labor is labor, it's service, it's not talk. And I think uh, the Hezmet movement personifies that, not just by the name itself, that it serves humanity, but by action. And I think their greatest virtue is that that service is not limited to any particular religious community. It's universal. And if we claim Islam to be a universal religion, and if we claim that the prophet was the last prophet sent to humanity and there is no other, then our focus, our field of operation must include all human beings. And I think that is, that is where Hezmat comes into the forefront as a pioneer, as a model that has to be emulated by many other movements, uh, and, and that's the only way that I think it will make some difference in the lives of this turmoiled world that we live in. The Prophet had another sunnah, which most people have forgotten. And that sunnah, if I can define it in terms of our 21st century um, American lifestyle, was the sunnah of the interfaith. The Prophet, in his short life as a head of state in Medina, during a period of roughly one decade, was able to communicate with more than 13 heads of states. This was unprecedented for his time. With the limitations on means of communication and all that, but he was able to have an interfaith dialogue at the head of state, at the summit level. He also received missions from various religious communities on the Arabian Peninsula. That will make it an interfaith with, uh, at the tribal level, let's put it that way. But more importantly, his favorite activity was to meet with uh, the non-Muslim community, heads, scholars, and wise men and people of knowledge within Medina to come together on a regular basis and sit on a patio. And because of that, the group that was getting together on this patio are called Ashabu Sufa. So that was nothing but an interfaith dialogue, an interfaith discourse, where he exchanged ideas with them, learned from them, and taught them about Islam. This is much more important as a sunnah, not because the prophet did it, but because we need it so badly in our times. Most of the problems that we experience today 
uh, in the east-west conflicts and in the south-north conflict, economic and political, uh, uh, they are due to lack of communication. And unfortunately, the Islamic movements, quote-unquote Islamic movements throughout the quote-unquote Muslim world today, they are stuck on traditions that do not necessarily serve us much. And we have ignored completely the greatest traditions that the Prophet exemplified, that if he came to us as mercy to the worlds, as the Quran attests to that, and the worlds is said in plural. So when it says alameen, we could define Alamin at one level, the various communities, because each community has its own Alam to itself. And the Prophet was not sent only to one, but to all of them. And for us to be, to be claiming to be Muslims and followers of the Son of the Prophet, those are the models we have to emulate. Those are the models we have to follow. Because the greatest... Um, virtue and the greatest reward in it would be that which God has said, that you be kind to people amongst you so God can be kind to you from high up. And whether we take this in literal sense or in, in essential ways, uh, we have forgotten to be to kind, uh, to be kind to ourselves and to our various uh, communities and our human family. I think it's in, incumbent upon Muslims to have a dialogue with those with whom they differ. I think education is where we have to invest because, like I said, not only it, it's the safe, uh, safest investment, but it's the only way out of the doldrum where we now, the Muslim societies again, in my opinion, is sinking into its own dark ages. Europe was in the dark ages. It came out of it through education. Yes, they went to the Muslim lands through the various crusades. The battles of the crusades may have been won or lost, but the battles that they won were those where they learned in what areas were they behind and how to catch up with the Muslim world. Uh, I think we can do a role reversal in the 21st century by realizing that the Muslim world is behind because we do not have enough education. The reason we, our quote-unquote Islamic movements are so backward, so rigid, so xenophobic, so self-centered, is because we don't even know our own religious ways. I give you the example of the sunnas of the Prophet. Pretty much the same thing applies uh, in respect to our understanding of the Quran. In other words, we have to become educated through good education. We can realize and recognize our own true Islamic virtue. So if we become good Muslims, we must. We must go through education, and it has to be public, and it has to be universal, without any restrictions. Uh, so that's why if the Hizmet movement or the Gulen movement in general is pursuing social reform through education, uh, I don't think there would be any sound mind to object to that.